Hello everyone, B.O.B. here, and welcome to Survive and Thrive, episode 10. And as you can see, we're back at HQ today, and uh, that's because there's a project here I would kind of like to undertake. Uh, good news, I, I put together a quick way to get to the fireworks factory, if we just have a little trip through the nether here. I got myself a little tunnel dug. Let's just run over this way real quick. And uh, I'm going to probably make this tunnel a little bit fancier. And I definitely want to bring some stairs to put in here so I don't have to jump the whole way up. <laughs> but we just get to the top of this mess. See, I got another portal here. And here we are. Right on top of the fireworks factory. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I didn't even have to move. I didn't have to build that portal there. <laughs> I, I just calculated the coordinates. Basically take the coordinates to this location right here with you know if I look at the map and your X and Z coordinates you want to divide those numbers each by eight and that would be the coordinates in the nether to where you want to build your portal so I just did that and interestingly enough it, it spawned the portal up here probably because I was in the roof of the nether so I was trying to get close to the Y uh, coordinate and, you know, the highest spot in the world in that location is the platform that I built, obviously. So, yeah, didn't didn't even have to build a new uh, portal on this side. Just built the portal in the nether, and it, it brought me right through to where I wanted to be. So that is basically the, the beginnings of our nether hub. I still want to link up a portal to our end portal, so that way we have a quick way to get there. Also, uh, I mentioned in an earlier episode, I know where there's a skeleton spawner, and we're going to be building a mob farm out of that, so I'm going to want to get a portal linked up there, and all those portals, I want to make sure they're secure, so I'm going to make, you know, maybe do the floors of them with half slabs where mobs can't spawn, and uh, at least cover them in from the outside with something durable, so that way we don't have to worry about gas blowing it up either. But today we're going to be focusing on this. I was I was complaining about it in the last episode about it being so slow and it 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 is it's terribly slow. Um so I came up with a design for a super smelter that I think is well, it's going to be cool for one thing and it, well, I know it's going to be a lot faster than this. See, here in the PS4 version, furnaces are movable. And because of that, we can make sort of furnace conveyors out of this. Now, I've seen a video of Il Mangos where he did this in a skyblock. Not quite like this. He had his kind of rotating up and down like a Ferris wheel. And then he only had one output, which I'm not sure how he managed to deal with the stuff getting left in the furnaces that never made it, quite made it to that, or he probably had it timed out to where they would all empty out, because he's, well, he's a genius. <laughs> but I just put hoppers underneath them all. Now, see, uh, this is relatively quick. It tends to, seems to be faster the more you put in it. Cause then you're getting the full use uh, of all the furnaces running at once. But well, like any super smelter, you can you can speed it up by adding more furnaces, and and that's what I did with this design. I also kind of sped up the clock a little bit with this one, so uh, the pistons turn just a little bit faster. You're getting, I believe, in this one, it was distributing five items per furnace. Uh, before it would push to the next one. This one's only getting four. But, 
works the same way. I just, you know, throw whatever I want to smelt in this top chest here. That chest in the back there is for the fuel. And, uh, yeah, this one's got more furnaces, so obviously it's going to work a little faster. And even this <laughs> isn't quite the final design. I'm going to... I'm gonna make one that just has a few more furnaces than this. Uh, the timing and everything's gonna be about the same, but I'm gonna try and build it all on camera so you can see how I did this and, uh, well, <laughs> show you how fast it actually operates. Okay, now I've done a few more things to prepare for this project. One thing is upgraded the kelp farm again. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, I added another tier of that, so that way it's producing a little bit more, and this isn't this it, this isn't going to stay like this. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be building the main part of my base coming out of this mountain here, and I'm gonna kind of round off the corners of that. So this is sort of just a temporary thing for now. Uh, you're not going to really see inside of the kelp farm much, so I might leave a sort of a viewing platform. But even it, still, i got to clean it up in there. Uh, another thing I did to prepare is I cleared a space. Um, <clears throat> took down the auto smelter and the little auto bone miller, which wasn't really getting much use yet anyways. And, uh, yeah, I, I dug a great big hole. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and gather up everything I need and get this build started. Okay, I think I got everything I need right here on this side of my inventory. Uh, the numbers aren't exactly correct. Um, this part should be right, two comparators, two repeaters. I should only need like one torch. I might need more redstone dust than that. I might need less. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. But yeah, only one dropper. I know I have some extra hoppers and extra chests here, four regular pistons, and I'm only going to use 24 of these furnaces, so. First, I'm gonna kinda start off right in the center. I guess this kinda looks central to the room. I wanna double chest this right in the middle. Probably should've counted that out, but I guess I'll figure it out here in a second. So I wanna crouch place a hopper on one side of that and another one on the other side so those are both feeding into that chest then one two three hoppers on this side and another one two three hoppers on this side and now I want to go one two three four five and another one two three four five so this is actually now six hoppers long because I counted five from the initial row which is eight hoppers long all right and then we want to close in the back of the ring here with one two three four and on this side one two three four so yeah it'll end up being seven blocks long on this side. Now, I suppose we'll go ahead and get our building blocks. I'm going to want a piston there, and I'm going to want a piston here, and I'm going to want a piston here, and I'm going to want a piston here. So it's going to be turning clockwise. Let's go ahead and just throw those pistons where they're going to be. gonna want to just go ahead and stick some temporary blocks in here. I'm gonna stick one there and one there. And then we're gonna go ahead and have a hopper feeding in to the top of one, a hopper feeding in to the bottom of one. So this hopper is going to be our fuel hopper and this one's gonna be with the the main input with whatever we're smelting. So we're going to go ahead and pop a chest on. Oh, I guess I got a crouch place. And then I'll crouch place a chest on top of this.
this one. There we go. Now, go ahead and get those out of here. And we should go right into that. All right, now, how we're going to tell this thing when it should be running. We're going to stick a block right there. Another one underneath. That one could just be temporary, but, you know, for the sake of building a structure, we'll go ahead and just build it just like that. And, uh, well, you're not going to actually see these, so I'm going to take them out of there. But I do need to get on top <laughs> of that structure. So I'm going to scaffold up here. And we want a comparator coming out of that block right there. And we need block for that comparator to feed a signal into. We're going to stick that right there. We're going to stick a torch right there. That is going to be the signal that turns the, uh, the piston furnace ribbon tape on and off, basically. <laughs> um, now I'm going to need sort of a dropper platform and well from the looks of things I'm also going to need some more room so I'm going to go ahead and dig out some of this above me here. Okay, I dug myself another layer of space here and how I think I want to do this is I'm going to stick a temporary block right there. Now I need hoppers. We're going to have one right there, feeding into that temporary block, and then, oops, I didn't mean to fall down from there, I need my droppers, or dropper, just the one, oh jeez, there we go, and then we want that hopper there facing into that hopper and we are going to take that block out and place another hopper right there so this is gonna basically form a, a ring um, but this is going to be our clock <laughs> so I want to build a little bit bit of a platform off of this. I think I might I'm not there, but nice three by three platform. Actually, going to need it to come down to that piston, so I'm gonna actually step up from there anyway. And I did this wrong. <laughs> now, this is actually right, it is a 3x3, three three, but the dropper on the corner. <laughs> okay, now that I got that straightened out, I'm gonna go ahead and bring a signal out of that dropper that comparator there feed that directly into a block and this is the same sort of auto dropper I did over at the gunpowder farm uh, to send the gunpowder up to my little AFK hut and this is actually going to be our clock for this whole contraption <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna steal this signal from the auto dropper and feed down into these pistons and then I'm gonna have to, I, I guess I actually need either two more repeaters or uh, observers but but yeah I, I send a signal straight to the two of the pistons on opposing end and then bring that signal from here to these other ones so you know, let me finish 
wiring this up real quick. I'm gonna for this one it's gonna be a little tricky because I don't want to send the signal back into that block there. So I actually want it to come down here. It should be fine. I don't think oh, that's gonna go up to the front of the hopper room. <laughs> but if I did this. I'll need to do is just put one single item into this little hopper ring up here. Now it's going to get locked into the hopper that has the torch right below it. But anytime there's something that gets put into our input chest, like this right here, and for some reason this piston back here isn't firing. Oh, I think I, I think I understand what's going on here. Drop that down. There. Yeah. Okay. That solved that issue. All right. I crafted up a couple of repeaters. Now you can see here, I brought the redstone signal straight across the pistons. This is something you wouldn't be able to do in like Java Edition. Uh, whenever the piston extends it breaks but that doesn't happen on PS4 edition it'll that connection will stay together uh, I'm gonna use a repeater here to draw a signal from that block and I actually want that to be on two ticks so I'm gonna go ahead and click it once and uh, I don't really like this I don't, know. Just don't like redstone on dirt that's for sure let's go ahead and wire that up. We're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. You see I brought the signal down to the top of the piston. I'm bringing it over here, then down. Same thing, use the repeater to draw from that block. Two ticks on that. And again. Go ahead and put that in. Now, in my testing, I found that no matter how I put these furnaces in here, uh, they all seem to, like, turn as they're being shifted. So, I'm not going to be too concerned about which way they're facing, but I am going to try and make them all facing, you know, towards the stairs here. Try. I don't believe they're going to stay that way, but just go ahead and across the hopper rings. Now if you notice I didn't hit one hit that first corner, I'm gonna want to leave this corner empty and this corner empty. And that's you know so the you know the piston ribbon tape actually functions properly. But I guess I need I'll go ahead and crash place here. See, like that one's kind of crooked, but I, I don't think I'm gonna be too worried about that because I really don't think there's gonna be, they're gonna stay in the same, facing the same direction because they didn't in my testing. It'd be cool if they did. Oops, that doesn't go there. Yeah, it'd be a lot cooler if it did. But yeah just did not seem to work out that way in my testing no matter how I faced them in there it seemed like they were all facing the inside of the circle once it started moving <sighs> I'm gonna try I'm gonna that went directly into that hopper chain but that's okay I'll try it this way yeah that did it all right I went ahead and put just one dried kelp block in every single one of these furnaces and uh, that's only for the first time use you know uh, just kinda to prime it uh, because once I put the rest of these dried kelp into this chest right here it's gonna start distribu 
distributing this mm -hmm. amongst all these furnaces. Uh, but I don't want to do it just yet because I don't want it to dump it all into one furnace. So I'm going to actually go ahead and throw in a couple... Well, we'll go with these three stacks of netherrack in to be smelted. And they'll start smelting right away because I primed it with those first couple blocks of dried kelp. But let's go ahead and... Well, I haven't even tested it yet. This is the test run, so... Let's go ahead and give it a shot. And something's already wrong. I figured it out. It was it, it was a timing issue. Uh, I could just get rid of those extra repeaters. Make this a three tick balls. And then that seemed to work. I guess the pistons just didn't have enough time to retract. To allow the next ones to extract. So, uh, hopefully, all of my dry kelp blocks didn't go into just like three ovens. That's probably what happened. Go ahead and just pick up a whole bunch of this. Oh, yeah, look how fast that's coming in. I don't understand what's happening here. It's kind of cool. <laughs> um, yeah, see they're facing... It's like they get flipped around once they get filled up. That's really weird. But I, I like it. I was kind of going for weird here. I didn't want an ordinary super smelter. And this is, this is definitely not ordinary. And it's working great. And there you have it, my friends, a fully functioning, rotating super smelter. Uh, I'm going to probably you know, decorate this or something off camera, make it look a little nicer down here. But um, that is about all the time I have for this episode today. So, uh, you know, if you enjoyed this episode, remember to hit that like button. And if you're interested in seeing more from me, please remember to hit that subscribe button. And I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching and wish you all a wonderful day.